have a lot of people, which is a great thing to see, and not as much time, I'm sure. So we'll get started right away. Um, what we'll do is introduce ourselves and then just open it up for comment once we've um, introduced ourselves. If you would please, please try to limit your comments so that as many people as possible can make the comments that they would like to make. We would, that would be greatly appreciated. So my name is Janine Easterday. I am a politician and a nurse, so I love this microphone. <laughs> also a chorus girl in my past, but we won't go there. Um, I am uh, from Traverse City, Michi Michigan, which is northern Michigan in the Lower Peninsula. And I worked at a regional referral center of about 392 beds for 39 years. I was in middle management, and I was um, the first magnet project director for our initial designation and our first redesignation. I retired a couple years ago, and so now uh, my life is my own, and um, I get to do these kinds of things. So it's great to see everybody here, and I will have each of my peers introduce themselves. Mary. Good afternoon. My name is Mary Fanning, and I am from Morgantown, West Virginia, about an hour south of Pittsburgh. Um, I've been at my organization for 35 years. I did start when I was five years old, and um, an academic teaching facility. I, too, have been a magnet program director with my organization, uh, three designations starting on our fourth. I've been an appraiser for about five years now and have transitioned that to one of my staff. So we are the only magnet facility in our state and uh, very proud to work there, but also proud to be part of the magnet. So thank you so much for having us. Hi, my name is Gail Johnson, and I am from uh, uh, New Jersey. Um, I work at Capital Health, which is a two acute care hospitals, about each about the size of this hospital, um, uh, only five miles apart from one another. I'm the Director of Regulatory Affairs, Clinical Education, and Infection Prevention. I've been a magnet appraiser about 12 years. Um, I also teach online and have dissertation students, so I love doing both the education and the administration piece. Uh, my name is Marnie Dodson. I'm actually an appraiser candidate, which means I'm in training, and this is my first site visit, and I've been fortunate enough to be mentored by um, this wonderful team that I'm with. Um, it means that I've reviewed all the documents for this um, site visit and um, participated in the site visit, so I should be done with my training. Um, in just a week or two, hopefully. Um, but I'm a magnet program director at, I have spent the last six years at a hospital in Northern Virginia, uh, actually Arlington, Virginia, right outside of DC. Um, but as of a week ago, I moved to New Jersey. Apparently I live in exit 13. If any of you are from New Jersey know what that means, I'm not sure I do. But I'm now the magnet program director at Holy Name Hospital in Teaneck, New Jersey, which is right across the GW Bridge. And um, I am just delighted to be here, so thank you. Okay, so let's get started. What would be very helpful is if you can queue up at the microphone. If you have mobility difficulties and it's not going to be easy for that for you to accomplish that, please just raise your hand and we'll make sure that we pull that microphone off there and um, we can use the one up here if, if we need to, but we can also pull that microphone off the stand and we want everyone to be able to hear them. Okay, who wants to start? The nurse is here, saved my daughter's life. My daughter had GBS. She had gone to an emergency, emergency room in Lindenhurst, Bayshore, three times. And they told me that she was dehydrated and she was a drug seeker, okay? My daughter's a long distance runner. She's not a drug seeker. When we got here, the triage nurse saw me carry her into the emergency room and took her right in. She was, by the time I moved my truck, she was already in a bed. They had already drawn blood and gotten a doctor to her. By the, by the time 48 hours went by, we had a diagnosis. The nurses didn't like that she was in a room all the way down the hall. They changed to a room right next to the um, office, you know, the nurse's station so that they looked in every five minutes because she was having trouble breathing. They had everything ready in case she had to be intubated. They saved her life. 
And they, if she didn't want to eat, they cajoled her. If she didn't want to do, you know, sit up, they cajoled her. She said, Ma, they're bothering me all the time. I said, they're mothers. <laughs> I told her, they're mothers. But I, I credit them with giving her the courage to go on to complete her rehabilitation because she just wanted to give up at one point. And I thank you all. Hi, folks. Hi. Um, my name is Bill Bodkin, and this young man is Colby. Uh, Colby is a therapy dog. We represent Patchog Rotary Animal Assisted Therapy. And um, we have been involved with Mather for perhaps the last six years, I have anyway, with Colby. And it's our regular assignment once a month is when we come, we go to the, <laughs> can I let him go? He likes yeah. okay. yeah, he likes <laughs> go <ahead. laughs> The. <laughs> Like <laughs> to the um, the psychiatric inpatient facility, both the um, adolescent and uh, and adult, and I have to tell you, for we are supposed to be providing a service, and I think we do. From the feedback that we get, people just feel happy and wonderful. But what it does for me personally, and what it does for this guy wherever he is. <laughs> he, he's a 12-year-old golden retriever. Their life expectancy is 10. And uh, come here. Hi, bud. <laughs> he's walking himself. And when he, himself. when he comes to this hospital, he just perks right up, and he's, he's, <laughs> he's like the center of, uh, of everything. But what I know is, and I think innately he knows, because dogs have this sense, he knows that he's making people's lives a little bit better for a short period of time. And I think we have usually about 12 adolescents that come in and they sit around and he's, you just say he lights up the room, they gather around him, they've all of a sudden for one moment, they're not in an institution. They're with their dog, they're talking about their dog, they're talking about their friends and, and about how when they grow up and they get their own house, they're gonna have dogs all over the place. Mm -hmm. So uh, I want to first of all thank the people that I work with, Jill and the others, the nurses up there, the staff, it just have become friends. And um, it is a wonderful, wonderful thing to see. If I wasn't involved in it, I would be as impressed. So thank you, I hope that helped. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. I'm Dr. Jim Gregory, but that's an academic doctorate. It's not MD, it's PhD. Um, I was here for lung cancer, and it was pretty serious. Spent uh, 10 days in the ICU, incredible care. And to give you some idea of how good the care was, that was 11 years ago. So <laughs> they did something right. Uh, <laughs> I've also been here for ambulatory surgery for bladder cancer several times, and the same thing, just incredible care. So th these people are the best. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, my name is Brian McAuliffe. Um, I'm here on behalf of the Suffolk County Boy Scouts. Um, we are the local council servicing about 15,000 youth and families. And of course, uh, you know the Boy Scouts of America and everybody thinks of little kids in blue and, and bigger kids in green. But uh, we have an exploring program, which is a career-based education. In Suffolk County, all of that um, career-based education that particular program was all for police departments and fire departments. And uh, we wanted to reach out to include additional careers in that. We approached Mather Hospital and we are happy uh, that uh, for some time now, the, the hospital is very receptive. It is the first exploring program um, run by the hospital. So this is a program that's administered by the, the organization, um, just like the police department does where the youth get um, experience. Um, certainly a college education to be in the medical field is not inexpensive and not without a tremendous commitment. So this gives them that transition. It is co-ed, all scouting is co-ed as you might have learned or is soon to be. Um, so we just want to be very thankful to, um, to the hospital besides doing all the great things it does for its patients and what it does for its uh, employees. It is very, very community involved and uh, that's a big stretch for people to above and beyond their call of duty if it, it would to be uh, welcome to bringing kids in and really teaching them a curriculum 
and having them get a one on This is not a, a simple seminar. This is a, a longer term commitment. Uh, the youth are here for a while. So I wanted to thank the hospital in a public way uh, for their efforts and uh, to, to change the lives of youth and to make the next generation of uh, magnet advisors. I'm sure. <laughs> I'm Alexis, this is Jenna. We are a part of the Explorers program. We just started this year. We are both going to college next year to be nurses, but the Explorer program was such a great thing to be a part of because you get to see different parts of the hospital between um, Central Supply, Central Supply IT, what else was the emergency? And it's just different parts of the hospital that you would never think of. It just really opened up your eyes to see all the family that's around here besides just the nurses. A few years ago, I had an employee of mine admitted to Mather. I went to visit him and recognized many of the staff caring for him. He was treated with compassion, professionalism, and wonderful care, which led to a speedy recovery. Not too long after that, my sister was admitted to the hospital suffering from an ailment. She had a two-day stay. After my sister returned home, she called me and thanked me for making a call to the hospital and said she received the royal treatment. I informed her that I was unaware that she was even in the hospital <laughs> and that they had no idea she was my sister. <laughs> this showed me that everyone gets the royal treatment here at Mather. It is a testament to the leadership of, of the hospital and its caring, compassionate staff. Marie Mulligan, in my opinion, has a true understanding how to execute with precision. Good afternoon, Magnet Committee. I'm honored to be here to share my Mather, and now Mather Northwell, experiences with you. My name is Judy Betts, and some of you may recognize the Betts name as my husband, Earl, was vice chairman of John T. Mather Memorial Hospital for more than 30 years until his passing in 2002. I started out as a patient at Mather in the, in the 60s, a volunteer and fundraiser in the 70s, and now a proud member and benefactor of Mather fam family for more than 50 years. As a matter of fact, the only hospital stay not at Mather was when Dr. James Taylor, cardiac surgeon now um, at Northwell, did my aortic valve replacement, and we are now again on the same team. Enough about me and more about the Magnet Program and the amazing nursing staff at Mather. The Magnet Program is the nation's highest honors awarded to a hospital's nursing staff, and what a nursing staff we have. My latest stay at John T. Mather was three weeks in ICU with a fractured femur. I wish I, could, I wish I could publicly thank each and every nurse for the amazing care. I have a list that's 30 names long. <laughs> My list is too long to do that today, so I'm here and just publicly saying thank you. There is a very special reason for the outstanding nursing at Mather. It goes beyond the magnet 14 points, I call the 14 points of light. We are a community hospital, and our nursing staff is not only part of our hospital, but part of our community. They are and exhibit a feeling of fellowship with others as a result of sharing common attitudes, interests, and goals. This sense of community is what is, one, what, is what one finds with Mather's staff, nursing in particular. They not only do an extraordinary job within the confines of these walls, but they too are part of the community surrounding Mather. As one awesome orthopedic surgeon so neatly uh, put it, uh, you see them at the supermarket, the library, the soccer field. They are exemplary professionals, and that is why I never met a Mather nurse I didn't love. <laughs> Thank you, Mather, and now thank you, Mather Northwell. May you continue Mather's legacy. Mather has always held a special place in my heart, perhaps because it's a focal point for community, for care in our community. 
although many people believe it's due to my dad's active role at Matha for several years, to the point where as a little girl, my daughter was adamant that her grandpa owned Matha Hospital. <laughs> However, I attribute my growing level of affection and commitment to Matha to its employees, in particular the nursing staff. I recall my dad having said on multiple occasions growing up just how much he loved the nurses at Mather Hospital. I can now attest to this lovely, unique, dedicated group of caring individuals firsthand as I, had had, as I have had both the honor and pleasure of working with many of them during the past three years. At Mather, I have found that the nurses' level of commitment and passion for their profession is like no other. I am delighted and honored to call them my friends and have entrusted and witnessed of many of my family members with their high level of service and care. Thank you. Hello, I'm Carol Tadero. Um, I've been in this hospital many, many times. I was just in the week of uh, Easter week in uh, April and I had something called acute pancreatitis. Uh, it was not pleasant, let's say that, okay? Uh, the thing was, the nurses, I think, were unbelievable because what they did, they also made sure that I was getting up, walking. The, the hardest part was not eating, but somehow I survived. But they were there, and with eating, I couldn't eat. The day when I was supposed to eat, they said, come on, you have to eat. And then I had to stop because I had to have something called an endoscopy done. So now I'm back to not eating again. But um, they're, they're, they're excellent. They really are. You, you can't have anybody better. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is uh, Bob McDermott. Um, I'm a retired superintendent of train movement for the Long Island Railroad, and I don't necessarily like microphones, <laughs> but I'll use it. I had ambulatory surgery last May, and about a week or so after the surgery, uh, I was still reeling from how impressed I was with the hospital staff that I wrote to Kenneth Roberts, the president of the hospital. And I just wanted to read a few excerpts of what I said at the time. I spoke briefly about the surgery and I said, beyond that though lies an extremely important layer of your staff that at times may be taken for granted. The nursing staff in both the pre-surgical and PACU units couldn't have been any nicer. Their concern and care for the patient was evident. They epitomized what we all look for in a medical environment, a professional, caring, attentive person whose dedication to their work shines through. Please extend my sincere thanks to them and your entire staff in both areas for being the utmost professionals. I went on to say, speaking about Kenneth, I said, there are of course others and everyone's shown in their individual roles. They, as well as yourself, should be commended for running a top-notch, compassionate, professional medical facility. I expressed to a friend of mine the experience I had at Mather. She summed it up for me perfectly. She said what always sticks out in her mind is everyone at Mather is kind. That alone speaks volumes. Hi, my name is Gladys Knowles. Um, we frequent this hospital a lot. My husband is a quadriplegic. He's um, paralyzed from his neck down. Um, so when he comes in the hospital, he is a handful. And the nurses are always so sweet. The um, CNAs that take care of him uh, are always there for him. He has somebody with him 24 hours a day because he even has problems speaking. He's on a vent, so he is just one of your heavy duty patients. Um, and we have had the best treatment here. He has not had a bed sore here where he's had it in other places. Um, so, I mean, that is something to be said for the staff to make sure that you know the client is well taken care of. Two people that I really appreciate what they've done for us. One is Rich. Rich, I don't remember your last name. He's a social worker here. And, um, and I heard you, got a, you told me you were, got a promotion. And um, <laughs> congratulations. And um, he worked tirelessly with Dr. Shupek, anybody that knows him, he's retired now, and Dr. Schiller to get my husband the Cadillac of beds. And some, you know, they kept telling me, you will not get the bed. Well, Rich got the bed. Many letters back and forth. He had to get in touch with the doctors and that. And we were able to get that bed. I mean, so that was a wonderful thing. Made our lives much easier because it percusses him and it turns him all those things you don't have to do anymore. So that's a great thing. The other person 
is somebody who, there was paperwork that I needed for, um, for the uh, nursing service, and it was left on the ambulance. I called the hospital, and um, I spoke to one of the nurses, not that I'm gonna say her name, Lisa. <laughs> and it was a, a really bad night. It was raining and everything. Lisa got off of work at 10 o'clock, drove to my house, and got, delivered us the paper. But the thing is that Lisa lives here in Port Jeff, and I live in East Japank, which is on the other side of the island. So I mean, staff like that, are, it's just very valuable to have people like that that you can really, really depend on. And if I needed to talk to somebody, the nurse managers are wonderful, the supervisors, they really are, we've had a wonderful experience. So thank you. Hi, my name is Diane McDonald. I'm pretty nervous. Um, <laughs> and um, I have three testimonies I'd like to make to the hospital. Um, I'm a yoga teacher, and um, I work with um, the back and the neck pain staff. Um, and I do yoga here, actually, in this room back there, twice a week. Um, and they have referred, uh, the nurses um, at that center have referred um, individuals to us who we've been working with now since last June, and it's just an amazing program. Um, the people who walk in the room, sorry, yeah. I get really emotional. <laughs> the people who walk in the room from that center have these huge grins on their face because they're realizing that they actually get to recover from their pain, and they're realizing that they actually get to move their bodies, which they didn't believe was possible, which is huge. So that's really amazing. The second story um, is that um, I also have trained the nurses um, who work with the teen patients in the psychiatric unit here. And those nurses are bringing yoga and meditation and breathing to kids who are really in trouble and really need this work. So it's so amazing that that's happening in this hospital because it's not happening very many other places. So the staff up there has been incredible. They've loved the training and they've really taken it on um, as their own to bring that to the children. And the third thing I want to say is that I'm on the board at our local yacht club, and we do a huge event with Mather every year, which is called the Village Cup Regatta. And uh, that raises money for palliative care here and pancreatic cancer with the Lust Garden Foundation. And I just want to tell you, I've done a lot of fundraising in my life. I've been very involved in not-for-profits. The participation, the enthusiasm um, that comes from this staff at this hospital and the community and the involvement that they bring to that day makes it by far, the mayor of Port Jeff will tell you, it's absolutely her most favorite event of the year because of the staff at this hospital. Thank you. Hello, Weeby Board. My name is Christine Cady, and as you know, I'm a registered nurse here down in the emergency department. And on June 26th of 2016 was the worst day of my life. I left my shift here on a 12 to 12, driving home, found myself three blocks from my house, and had a seizure. Unbeknownst to me, I had a brain tumor. I was taken from the accident scene where I actually thought I was having a hemorrhagic stroke and brought to Mather. I was in chest pain one, and Dr. Kenneth Hirsch came up to my bed and said, in a crack of voice, Christine, I don't know how to tell you this, you have a brain tumor, and it's big, and it's bad. I was taken up to the ICU. I was cared for by the most wonderful nurses who took the time to not only sit there and talk to me about my diagnosis, which I knew about, but to pray with me. Every single nurse that I work with down the ER, there was a line of nurses outside my room. I don't have any family on Long Island, but I have a family here. Mather nurses are the top nurses in the world. Believe me when I say that. I've been on the other side of the stretcher. Thank you. Hello, my name is Michael Seifert, and I, I can fortunately say I have never been treated at Mather. Uh, but what I can say as a financial planner here in, in the community, the president of the Rotary, which is the largest philanthropic organization in, uh, here in Port Jefferson, and as the vice president of the Chamber of Commerce, there is no other organization in the Port Jefferson community that's making a larger difference than Mather is. And it's something that they should truly be proud of. And I just wanted to share a few words. Thank you. Good afternoon. Um, I'm Joseph Eng. I'm one of the critical care intensivists. Um, I also do a couple other things here at the hospital. Um, <laughs> I'm laughing. Um, so, you know, we've talked about how Mather nurses have 
been there for the patients, I've been there for the families. I wanna, I'm also a program director for the transitional year residents. I'm also the chief medical information officer. So I get to see a different aspect of the people that I work with. And one of those is not just how wonderful their care is for their patients, but also the level of, of education that they have, the level of trust that I can have in them as an intensivist when I'm working with them in the critical care unit. Um, because there's a couple of things that, I'm also attending at another academic center um, out in the city, and you can tell just by how the nurses interact with the physicians and with the people they work with, the type of quality they are. Number one, they're empowered to ask the physicians whenever they're in doubt, whenever they have a question. Um, they don't feel nervous about questioning our orders, which I think is extremely important. Uh, the other thing is the level of inquisitiveness that they have when there's something that they need to learn more about or that they don't understand. Um, I've had my residents sit down and explain concepts to them and you can see the nurses just kind of circle around the, the, the resident and to the attendings whenever something's being explained because they really want to learn. They want to take better care of their patients. They want to elevate themselves. And I think that it makes a big difference in how they take care of their patients because they're not just doing it because the order's there. They, they're doing it because they know it's the right thing to do. And I think that that makes a huge difference. Thank you. Hi, good afternoon. Um, my wife has been a frequent flyer at Mather Hospital for the many, many years. Every time they get her better, they send her home. So I, I'm very impressed with the nursing staff here, how they take care of my wife and be able to send her back home. She's a bilateral amputee, diabetic, cardiac, you name it, she's got everything. Um, with that, I was so impressed with the nursing staff here and how this hospital ran. I'm the paramedic program director for St. John's University. I'm a retired paramedic from the fire department. I reached out to Adam Wass and to Phil Messina because I wanted to get my paramedic students in here. And they were able to help me do that. I was also a patient here just recently. It happened to be on my birthday. And I got my meal and I got an extra surprise. <laughs> Dietary came up and sang to me. <laughs> so, you know, this hospital, we, we've been coming to, my wife has been coming to for ages. We literally live on the south side of the shore and we travel here. It's not like we live within five or 10 minutes. And, and we make sure that, I make sure I get my wife here. But the, the staff here, they kick ass. <laughs> Hi, I'm Deborah Steppa. I'm one of the assistant directors of nursing here. I live in the community. And you, as nurses, we never expect to be on the other side. And I found myself having to have emergency back surgery. And, you know, I'm the off shift boss. I, ha I work with everybody here. And they treated me with such dignity. And everybody from radiology to the emergency room to the OR to pack you to MRI. I can't thank them enough. And especially to my my floor, three north, the best. <laughs> and to my my transitional leader, my boss, Marie Mulligan, came personally three times to my room when she was getting ready for magnet and everything else to make sure I was okay. Hi, my name is Ann Bayard and I'm a volunteer and yes, I do have one of those pink jackets over there. <laughs> Not on today. Uh, when someone asks me why do I volunteer at Mather Hospital, my very simple answer is usually because I like it here. Well, that's a simple answer, but it's true. But anyway, almost eight years ago, I retired from my full-time job and I said, okay, what do I do now? Well, I'm not the athletic type. I don't knit and crochet. Okay, so let's volunteer at Mather. Um, but there was more than one reason to doing that because why at Mather? Well, at the time, my husband had been almost a regular here as a patient for the previous seven years. Every time he was a patient, either through the ER or as an outpatient or as an inpatient, he and I were always treated by everyone, from the volunteers to the cler clericals to the nurses especially and the doctors and the administrators with the utmost care and concern. That was reason number one. Reason number two was a little bit more practical. We lived pretty close. I lived in Quorum. Okay, that's great. 
15 minutes. I could work in central hours or in the off central services or in the office, have time for lunch, and still pick up my granddaughter. Who had it better? I volunteered. It was great. Reason number three came a little later. The day I usually volunteers was, teared was Wednesday. Little did I know that Wednesday is also auxiliary meeting day uh, once a month. Okay, so I was a target. <laughs> and would you like to be on the auxiliary board? Oh, okay, what do I have to do? Well, you can be membership chairman of the uh, auxiliary, that means collect the dues. And a little later, would you like to be recording secretary? So, still there, still <laughs> loving it. I said yes, and that's another story. The ladies on the auxiliary board are some of my very best friends now. We have lost a few, but I remain grateful that I was able to know these wonderful people, as many, as well as all the a lot of the volunteers in their very special group. Now, getting to the main reason I was asked to speak to you today, I no longer live just 15 minutes away. A little over six years ago, that patient I spoke about who received the wonderful care here for 15 years, my husband, passed away. So I had to make the decision whether to stay in Quorum or move closer to my sons. Well, I decided to move closer to my sons down to Islip. That was about three years ago. The move was good for me, but so was Mather good for me. So what do I, so, okay, as a re result, I still make the trip here most weeks, and especially get here for meetings and other auxiliary events. I'm still membership and chairperson and recording secretary. For me, volunteering anywhere is not for any reason other than being a compassionate and caring person, willing to help as best as I can, as all the other volunteers are. And math is a place I have chosen to do that, even if it takes me at least 45 minutes to get here. I never leave here without feeling grateful that I can make a difference. It's one of the best feelings in the world. So in closing, I thank Mather. I thank the wonderful people here. And I hope I continue, can continue volunteering for many years to come. My name is Warner Ulrich, and I'm a resident of Mount Sinai. And fortunately, by the grace of God, I have very little experience here at Mather Hospital. <laughs> I, uh, in my uh, three quarters of my working years, I was exposed to asbestos. And of course, the cigarette smoke, either directly or indirectly. And I was aware later on in life, I was aware of asbestos you know, being dangerous to the lung, but really paid that little attention to it. One day, uh, of course, I was having uh, CAT scans done on me uh, every six months to make sure that there was no growth in the lung. One day, and I don't know who the heck it was that told me, but he gave the, the, you know, telling me that I had cancer of the lung. And of course, the bottom fell down for me. And uh, I wasn't as good as I once was, that's for sure, handling a problem. And I want to publicly thank uh, Eileen Zayotis for having indirectly taken me by the hand and moving me from one doctor to the other, from one nurse to the other, handling everything that had to be done and keep me calm. And uh, she even literally came to visit me in the hospital. It was very kind of her. And so I want to thank not only Eileen, but everybody that handled me. Thank you very much. My name is Narupa Ramji Singh. I am with the hospital medicine department. I'm going to speak on the professional end of the nursing in Mather Hospital. Dr. Kokar and I work very closely with all of the nurses. I think they should be commended on their ability to work inter with intercollegial. Um, they're, they're driven to be working intercollegial. We strive to educate not only the physician assistants, the hospitalists, but also the nurses. Because we have a lot of new nurses, we also have residents. We have been working together doing um, s simple things like mock codes where not only do we get the chance to do the code, but so does the nurses to interact. Um, as a result, when we do have one, the, there's a little calmness, a lot more calmness in the room. Usually, the, I mean, you, you guys are nurses, so you know there's a lot of confusion in mock codes. We have um, recognized that we were having an issue at night with communication between phone calls uh, nurses, the residents, the physician, the physician assistant. So nursing came up with the idea if we could pilot a program on 2South where at night the residents, the nurses, 
and a physician assistant yeah. and the physicians uh, and the nurse practitioners would come and meet with the nurses, go over all the information that we need, any issues that they may have, any patient that needs to be seen. And I think that they just ran the data. I'm not sure if they published it to anyone, but it's, it's amazing, the results. Our phone calls have gone, and the verbal orders have gone down to some of them single digits from hundreds. So I just want to say thank you guys, because they, you have enhanced my career as well and improve my knowledge in a lot of things. So thank you. We, we work very closely with our nurses. I mean, they work closely with us. You know, during, during the, even the rounds with the residents, we, like, we involve them to make rounds with us, so they make rounds with us now um, during teaching service. Um, and uh, I've been to a lot of, I have worked in a lot of different hospitals, but we got the excellent nurses here, very loving, caring, dedicated nurses. Uh, so I say thank you to everybody for taking care of all of our patients. Good afternoon. My name is Tanya Randolph. I am the administrator at one of the facilities in the area not too far from here, Surge Rehabilitation and Nursing. Prior to becoming an administrator, I was a director of nursing at facilities in both Suffolk County and Nassau County. And I have to say, I've never worked with a hospital so patient-driven as Mather. Um, Mather is our 911, so we send patients here, but we also receive patients from Mather. And at the end of the day, I have to say the numbers don't lie. In all the facilities that I've worked in, I've never seen such a low readmission rate from patients that come into the facility that don't go back out. And the reason being is that the care is so great here. Patients get the care that they need, they get the focus that they need from the nursing staff, from the social workers, from the discharge planners, to make sure that they don't have to be back in the hospital necessarily. So I just want to say thank you to Mather for all that they do for the patients, not only my patients, long-term care patients in my facility, but the patients in the community. Thank you. Hi, I'm Debbie Engelhart. I'm the director of the Comswag Public Library, which serves three local communities. It's about five minutes away. And I'm, uh, I'd like to speak to you today as an educator and as a citizen. I'd like to just share with you that um, at the public library, we've had the pleasure of taking advantage of many of the outreach uh, opportunities we've had through Mather, such as the Speakers Bureau and some healthy initiatives we've been able to bring into the workplace. I'm very excited right now, though, to be working through, um, through behavioral health with Denise Driscoll. I think she's here somewhere. Um, we got a grant through the New York Library Association to partner and work on a pressing community issue. And while our project is in the development stages, its goal will be to approach um, the stigma surrounding mental illness and addiction in our community. So we're very excited about that. It's a year-long project. Also, I'd just like to share, um, as I think Diane and Michael mentioned, it's an absolute pleasure uh, as someone who's involved with many community organizations to work with Mathers administrators and staff throughout the year. Uh, no one hesitates to get involved if Mather is uh, running a, an event or has an opportunity for us. And by the same token, they're very happy to work with us whenever we approach them. Also have been a patient, as has my family and um, surgeries, ED, telemetry, long story. Um, <laughs> But over the last 20 years, we feel cared about, and um, we care about this hospital. Thanks. I'm the stepfather and legal guardian of a special needs adult male who is profoundly retarded. He's not an ambulatory, and he's an inpatient at Mather now. And he's cute. He's, <laughs> kind, he's kind of a connoisseur of hospitals because he's been hospitalized, unfortunately, all over New York. He's had surgery at the hospital for special surgery a number of times. He's been at Winthrop Hospital. He's been at, uh, um, excuse me, Long Island Jewish Hospital. Uh, I keep hearing Mather referred to as a community hospital. It is a community hospital, but it is so much more. Um, I'm not really familiar with Magda. I'm not really familiar with Northwell, but I do know one thing. My stepson has never received better care and more attention, especially from the nurses on 3 North, than he receives now. And if any hospital ever deserved to be recognized, it's got to be Mather Hospital. 
because um, with all my stepson's problems, he wouldn't be here now. He wouldn't be with us still if it weren't for the tremendous work that Mather continues to do for him. So I thank you for that. And please, I, I, I was directed to other hospitals in the area. At this point in time, when we had him at home with us and an ambulance would come, I would implore them, please don't take him anywhere except Mather. That's the only hospital I want him in on Long Island or even in, in uh, the New York metropolitan area now. <laughs> Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Cheryl Bishop. I'm a nurse. Um, a few years ago, I was working as a nurse in the breast center. And then I became a patient there at the same time. And um, the care could not have been better. And you would think, well, you're working there. Um, they made my family part of their family. They, they're those warm blankets. Um, they could not have done anything more. But the thing is that um, they didn't treat me any differently than they treat all the other patients there. I, was, I became a patient then, and that's the treatment that you get there. That kind of qualified me for the other item I would like to speak about is um, our kind of new patient and family advisory council that we do have at Mather. Um, it qualified me because you needed to be um, a patient or a family member to participate in this volunteer um, council. Um, it started in October of 2015. We, um, and our goal really, our main goal is to make it the most excellent experience, patient ex and family experience that you can have at this hospital. Um, in trying to accomplish that, we um, work on a lot of things that may not really have been brought to everyone's attention. They're brought to our attention, and we figure out a way to, to solve it. Um, we work in collaboration with all of the nurses. Um, we are with the oncology unit, but we work with all of the staff. We work with the patients and their families to try to make things run as smoothly and um, just as comfortably and to get the best out of their experience as ma at Mather as they can. My name's Matthew Quinn. Um, I was brought in here by ambulance morning of February 23rd, 2016. Unbeknownst to me, I still don't even believe it. My wife reminds me, everybody else reminds me, I had a massive stroke. I was induced into a coma. I was out for 11 days. A lot of that I don't remember. You know, come to, I'm kind of like, what heck happened to me? Um, but what I do know is that my family, and I mean, this is going from my wife, my in-laws, my parents, and extended family, all came back to me with stories of, the nurses told us you'll be fine. The nurses said they've seen this before. You'll be fine, this, that, and the other thing. And just to make a point of it, the reason I'm wearing the hat is I've been back to work since the end of February. This, you know, I'll be there a year this year. Thank you. But at the time, that was considered like, you know, oh, you're gonna, it'll take forever for you to recover. You know, this will happen, that'll happen. But the care that we, I received, I mean, just being out and in a coma for that long and not being able to control anything, and you think you can take care of everything, to come around and just have it, oh, this one said this to me, or this one, and I apologize, because the names escape me all the time. I mean, I hear Melanie, Lisa, you know, Ralph, this one, that. I, I, to me, it's just kind of like, yeah, okay, whatever, I'm, I'm stuck here. But just the care, it was just out of control. And for somebody to just kind of be brought in by ambulance where it was one of those, you know, oh, I'm fine, it's nothing, you know. And then it was, oh, no, you had a stroke. I'm like, I had no idea. But just incredible. So that's it. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Don Lippincott, and I've been a, mem uh, a resident of this community my entire life. And uh, a little story to tell you uh, is about my grandmother, who uh, hadn't been in a hospital for 55 years. And at her time of uh, her visit here in September was because we had to get her out of Florida because of a hurricane. She was 101. And uh, during her lunch on the 9th of September, she choked on a pork chop. Yeah, she's got a very good appetite at 101. 
and uh, didn't want to go to the hospital. Couldn't breathe, but she didn't want to go to the hospital. So the only way to get her here was in an ambulance. And uh, the, she got here, and the, the staff took her in, and my grandmother was absolutely fear-struck. Again, like I said, she hadn't been in a hospital my entire life. So um, the upshot of this is, by the time she left here five hours later, she had gotten all the care she needed, she had an endoscopy, and she was hungry. <laughs> She was really bummed when we got her home before dinner and she couldn't have, she couldn't have supper that night. Yeah. But in any event, um, she thought that the care here was unbelievable and she doesn't fear a hospital any longer. And she's 102 now because her birthday was a couple of weeks ago and she's still very hungry. Thank you. My name is Renee Costelli and um, I, it's gonna be six years that I'm working here. Uh, originally, when you came back in uh, 2013, I, the same forum, I stood up and I said, um, all I really have to say is, I feel like I died and I went to nursing heaven. So, and what I meant by that was, I came from other facilities where um, they did not really nurture having nursing excellence. There was not supplies, there was not education, it didn't matter, it was all about the money. And here, I did, I died and I went to nursing heaven. It's not about the money, it's about the care. So I wanted to, uh, in this forum also, let you know what I have really experienced in, in the last four and a half years. Is this real? It has not changed. It, my experience here has gotten better. I started on Two South and um, there was a family member that just did speak of a care gotten at another facility. And when I started on Two South, that excellence of not, of turning the patients, it does matter, it does matter to um, wound care and, and well. Um, and that is why Mather stands out in our community. While on Two South I was encouraged to um, I, I was given the opportunity to be, to go and have ed educated on uh, being a uh, preceptor for a designated education unit for Adelphi, and um, I started teaching students from Adelphi on, this, on the unit, and then I was encouraged to go for my master's in uh, nursing education, which I'm doing right now. From that, I was uh, asked I wanted to go to the infusion center where I am at this time. When I went to, to the infusion center, the nurses there showed me the, how they nurtured me and showed me how to use that compassion that I have for people and for families. And I, the experience that I've, I've, that I've gotten in the infusion center is, I just have to quote um, two patients that one, was getting treatment by us, had to go elsewhere, and uh, she's quoted as saying to her physician, I'm going back home, I'm going back to the infusion center. It's not going back to a facility, she's going back home. Um, another family member was quoted, her um, mom passed away, and we had a patient appreciation day that uh, we had a day without disease here. And actually this room, we just, opened it up, all the nurses, we, it was on a Sunday when we were closed, and we had family members come here, and we had uh, patients, and this one uh, girl, she said to me, you know, when my mom would talk about you, she would talk about you guys like you were family. I knew that I could leave my, my mom there. One last thing I just wanted to say is that my dad, passed away in uh, November of 2015. And as I was trying to juggle everything, family life and taking care of my father, in his ending days, I knew I, I had to get him here. And I knew when I was, had to take care of something with my family, my children, that when I walked in, there was a nurse sitting there doing what I would do for for people, and now they're doing it for my family member. My dad was not alone. The nurse was sitting there with him. So I thank you for your time. 
Uh, my name is Dr. Adam Wass, and uh, I have the good fortune to not only be the medical director for the emergency department here at Myler Hospital, uh, but I'm also a community member. Um, I proudly refer my family, my friends, to Mather Hospital because simply the care here, the standard of care is unsurpassed by anywhere else in the region. Um, I could talk about uh, you know, the ED nursing leadership, Julie Tigay and her team of assistant nurse managers, and all the work that they've done in the ED to improve you know, patient throughput, increase pa the uh, patient experience, um, reduce falls. Uh, that's just to name a couple of the things. But I think it's more pertinent to tell a couple of quick stories. Um, when one of our new ED docs uh, came on staff, young woman, uh, from Queens. She was living there and commuting, and uh, she had only been here maybe a month less, uh, was looking for a place to live locally, an apartment, to rent an apartment. And she was uh, about to come off shift, and she mentioned it to one of our ED nurses, who, you know, barely knew her, um, and said that she was going to go looking at an apartment. And uh, the you know, ED nurse inquired, so wh where are you looking? And she told her, and she said, oh, you can't go there by yourself. And she was getting off shift, and she went with her to go look at apartments, barely knowing her, and she found a place, and she felt safe. That's the kind of nurses that we have. Um, another quick story is my wife's grandmother, um, who had been very ill and been at several hospitals. She lived in Nassau County um, with heart ailments, um, ended up coming here at one point. And um, when we went up to visit her, uh, she couldn't stop going on about the food and how good it was <laughs> and uh, the, the care that she was getting. And uh, to, to quote her, and I'll never forget this, you know, she compared Mather favorably to another hospital by calling it the Shangri-La. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know, there's a lot of changes going on in healthcare nowadays. And we all know that there's a lot of pushes to move patients through, get patients out, speed things up. Um, and you could say maybe that the philosophy and the, the care at Mather and, and the nursing here is sort of a throwback to way, the way hospital care used to be. But in my opinion, it's the way hospital care should be. Thank you. Hi, my name is Gail Swatala. Last May, after my yearly mammogram, I received a phone call from my doctor saying that I needed to have an ultrasound and a breast biopsy. She suggested that I come to the Fortunato Breast Center, which I did. I was assigned the most wonderful nurse navigator by the name of Stephanie. Stephanie was with me along every moment of my journey. The um, Ultrasound was, of course, not the most comfortable thing. She actually stood with me and held my hand, told me, it's okay, you'll get through a bit. You're doing a great job. So after that, um, I was told I had breast cancer. She sat with me while the doctor explained the steps that I would be taking. Um, she made all the appointments with the surgeon, with the oncologist, with the radiology oncologist for me. And after each appointment, she called to see if I was happy with the doctor and if I needed another, uh, another person to speak with. After that, I had an MRI, and she called me and said that they found something in the other breast. So the procedure started again. And she was there with me, holding my hand, and just an amazing, wonderful, compassionate lady. Thank God the surgery went well, and I hope I'm cancer-free. And every month, I get a phone call from Stephanie to see how I'm doing. So I am totally in love with her. And <laughs> every other nurse that I encountered in the hospital was fantastic. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Um, you all reminded me about why this is one of our very favorite sessions when we make a magnet visit. So the stories are very wonderful, and um, you can bet it will make a big difference in our deliberations. If we have about two or three minutes, if we want to, anybody else wants to make a comment before we wind up. But thank you for coming. and. Um, 
Is there anybody, maybe one or two people? Okay. Sure. My name's Laura Sparrow. I work for an outside agency. Uh, Kindred at Home is the agency, is a home care agency. I've been here about four years. I've been an RN over 30. But I have to say, people here are just so friendly. It's such a great team, the collaboration. Everybody talks. Nobody's bothered by you asking, oh, can you tell me if that Foley went in? Because I don't, I don't have access to look at certain things, you know? Nobody's ever bothered. And that's what makes it great here. It's really a family. It's really a teamwork. And I really enjoy working here. I'll be sorry if Northwell comes in with another agent and I got to go. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you. <laughs> I'm Kristen Way. I'm the administrator at St. James Rehabilitation and Healthcare Center. I've been there for about 10 years now, and all of the patients that have come to our facility from Mather have nothing but wonderful things to say about the care and the compassion of the physicians, the nurses, the social work team, Rich, Kathy, really go above and beyond. And even when they're discharged, they still call and follow up about them and ask how they are doing. So I really think this is an amazing hospital, and I'm so honored to be working with all of you. Thank you. I'll wrap up. Thank I've been you. avoiding this the whole time. Oh. <laughs> and of course, I'm the last person. Hi, I'm Adam Cooper, and I'm the administrator of Water's Edge at Port Jeff. And I just kind of, I'm actually a new member of this community, and this is the first time I've ever been at a meeting like this. Um, you don't see the kind of continuity, compassion, and care that's going on here. And I've been in Nassau County and Manhattan. Um, the synergy of working with the social work team and the case management team with my team at a long-term care facility is, it's seamless. And that's what makes it better for the patient in the transition. And it's a key part. There's no such thing as a stupid question to Rich or Kathy. Um, they work like part of our team, like we're all working together in this absolute synergy and it's because Rich and Kathy go above and beyond to make sure that their patients are, are as good as they possibly can be and that we have any piece of information that we need to make it work. And on a personal level, I have two young children, I have uh, sick relatives, and now that I'm living in Port Jeff and I am now a part of this community, after hearing what everybody has had to say today, I'm really happy that I moved in this area because to know that there's a place that these people that I've never met or spoken to are speaking so highly of the nurses and the doctors and the care that goes on here um, makes me even happier being here at this part of the world in Port Jeff and to be associated with a great, a great institution like Mather. So thank you for all you do. Well, thank you very much. Um, we're going to go find some Kleenex now. And, <laughs> but we'll be hanging around a little bit if you, if you really want to share something that you didn't feel you could share in front of the whole group. So thanks again for coming.